In this video, we are meeting with Matt Chesko, the very talented creator of the NFT project Pop Art Cats. As usual, nothing in this video is financial advice. We are not financial advisors. The NFT space is incredibly risky, so always do your own research. Without any further ado, Matt Chesko, how's it going, Matt? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. I think it's really important for people to be able to navigate the NFT space uh, correctly. And I think you guys are doing a really nice job. Absolutely. Well, you know, our pleasure and thank you for the kind words. Um, you know, I'm really excited to speak with you today. Um, I'm a holder. I guess I can say we're a holder because one of our shared wallets has some uh, pop art cats in it. I'm an individual holder as well. Um, and I think it's a really interesting project because I think, you know, you're seeing other projects kind of come out. You're seeing a lot of hype with them and then they fizzle out. This project to me was a little bit more under the radar a little, but with really great art. And now it's really starting to pick up. So, you know, I wanted to talk talk about your creative origins. I know that you've been a full-time artist for a few years now. You've built up a huge following on a couple of social media platforms. Could you talk about like your creative beginnings and maybe how you got to the NFT space? Uh, sure. So I think it's a long story, but uh, let's get into it. So I used to be a mechanical engineer. Uh, not many people know this, but uh, I got out of college in 2018. So like four years ago, and um, I found a job as a mechanical engineer. I started working there on a Monday. And like every hour that I was there, I was asking myself, like, what am I doing here? I don't like this job. And it's not like my job was not interesting. I had a really uh, nice position. All my friends were jealous of my job. I was the right arm uh, of the CEO of a uh, company that was making lots of money and that was changing the world for the best and uh, everybody wanted the job I had and uh, somehow every hour I was like I don't like this stuff what am I doing here and then on Thursday so after the fourth day uh, I came back to my place and then I listed the pros and cons of keeping my job and in the pros section the, the only thing that I wrote was that I was making an income so it was pretty clear to me that I had to quit this job. So the next day I I went to the office, I learned how to use the printer. I printed my res resignation letter. And then my boss came in at like 10.30. I told him I was quitting and that I, I didn't want to be a mechanical engineer after all, even though I studied like five years to become one. And I only worked like four days and and then he probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> and he asked me, like, what's your plan? What are you going to do next week? Uh, like, <laughs> what's going on? And then I had no plan. I just knew I didn't want to do this. So I told him the first thing that came to my mind. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to become an artist. And then at this point, he probably thought I was even crazier because, <laughs> like, this came out of nowhere. And back then I was just painting on my free time. I was doing like abstract art and it was just like color shapes uh, next to one another. It was not really good looking. Nobody would buy this stuff. And uh, somehow it was like my dream to become an artist. So I quit and in the weeks that followed, that's, that's what I started doing. I started working on my art. So I was painting uh, on my free time and I was uh, building websites and doing graphic design to make an income. And I did this for like a year. And uh, it was really hard because like every week, my friends, my family, my parents were asking me like, uh, what, are you, what are you doing? And you, you can get a job right away. And I had a really, uh, I had, I could find any job really easily because I had a really nice uh, resume. And they were asking me every week, especially my parents, like, why don't you find a job in mechanical engineering? You can do like $50,000 easy the first year. And uh, I, I don't care about money. I just want to have fun and do what I love. So um, after a year of like having so much pressure from my parents and my family, I decided to move away from like everybody and uh, to focus on my dreams and my goals and my passions. 
So I live in Montreal on the East Coast of Canada, and I decided to move all the way to the West Coast in Vancouver. And I didn't know anybody there. I didn't have any friends there. I didn't have a job there. I just wanted to get away from like all the negative comments I was receiving every week because I was actually having dinner with my parents every Sunday. And this was like the worst moment of my week. Sure. Uh, if my parents are listening, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I ever told you that, but uh, yeah, so it was not, not fun. And I decided to move to Vancouver. And when I arrived there, I started working on three of my passions. So I was trying to join a tech company because I, I have like a tech background. Uh, and I also did venture capital for a year. And I work with so many like tech startups. So I know how these things worked. And at the same time, I was also uh, working on my art on my free time, trying to become an artist and trying to build and create uh, interesting art that people would want to buy and own and and uh, talk about it. And I was also trying to join like the movie industry because I always wanted to become a movie director since I was really young. And so I was like working on these three passions at the same time, trying to join a tech startup, painting on my free time. And then uh, I also joined the movie in the industry. I became a PA, a production assistant. That's a fun and, job. Uh, <laughs> No, it's not. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you're uh, sarcastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it depends. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's not. But uh, like, you know, when you're PA, sometimes sometimes you have to empty the garbages. So every time. It's, it's, yeah, every 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 day, every hour. Um, but I actually, so my plan at one point was to work as a PA for a month, and then work on my art for a month. And go back to be, become uh, to being a PA, and then go back and forth until I could become a full time a full time artist. And uh, I was lucky enough that I only had to work for a month as a a PA uh, because TikTok uh, like started being really mainstream in the US and Canada at the same time I was like launching my art career and. So if we go back like two years ago in December, 2019, that's when I actually posted my first video. So if anyone is listening and they have no idea what kind of videos I do, I invite you to go check it out on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Snapchat. Uh, I'm even on LinkedIn, I'm everywhere. You can just check it out. And um, when I was uh, trying to find a way to uh, mar like mar um, advertise my art and uh, uh, do something special that would bring like more attentions attention towards my my art and my uh, what I'm doing. I actually uh, came up with the idea of just waving waving my paintbrush at the canvas and uh, having the paint magically appear on the canvas. And this idea just popped in my mind one day. Uh, in December 2019, I created my first video. And uh, back then I had like 200 followers on Instagram. And I posted the video on Instagram because TikTok was not really a thing at this time. And like only kids were on TikTok. And I didn't even know it, it was uh, a thing. And uh, I posted the video on Instagram. And um like all my friends went crazy. They were like, holy shit, this thing is so good. And a girl I didn't know posted my video in her Instagram story. And she said something like, I watched this video 20 times. It's so <laughs> good. I never seen anything like it. And at this moment, I knew I had a really amazing concept. And I just needed to uh, keep doing it. And so... That's when I decided I was not going to go back to working in the movie industry as a PA. So is this the painting of the girl with yellow hair? Um, so oh, the sorry, first, yeah, yellow she has no no hair, a yellow background. Yeah. So if you go on my YouTube, 
Okay. Uh, I think it's the first video. It's I think it's still there. On YouTube, not Instagram. Uh, I think I, it's not on Instagram anymore. Okay, so you create this video, you post it on Instagram. That's the first one that you do, and that was a couple years ago. And you got, uh, I mean, the 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 most popular one, painting Anna and pop art. Yeah, that's the first one. And then the next one gets 5.8 million views. That's crazy. Are you looking at YouTube? Yeah, painting uh, Anna and yeah. pop art, followed by painting Bella and pop art. What what do you think caused this to go viral other than it being um, like cool art? Um, uh, the thing is, when I actually posted this video on YouTube, YouTube Shorts was not uh, a thing yet. So... In the beginning, I was getting like 200 views on YouTube. And then in May 2020, when they launched YouTube Shorts, that's when all my YouTube videos took off. So when I was just starting, my video, my YouTube videos were getting no views, like zero. Mm -hmm. But uh, they just took off like six months later. So this got, uh, so this went viral via YouTube Shorts? Um. Yeah, but I actually went more viral in the beginning through TikTok. So I posted my first TikTok video in uh, December 2019. And uh, I think it got like maybe 10,000 views in a week or something. And um, so you got 10,000 views in a week and you quit your job. Like what's going through your mind <laughs> like at this point? Because that seems uh, like wildly unreasonable. Yeah. And I think the thing was with me is uh, I'm really optimistic guy, and uh, clearly, like, and also like when I have a vision, I do everything to make it happen. So when I decided I was gonna become an artist and just keep making videos, and it, it was gonna work, like I knew that somehow it's, it, w it would work, and uh, maybe I got lucky. I think I guess uh, because of TikTok, uh, it helped a lot. But I actually stopped like working as a PA when I uh, got on TikTok, when I saw like the viral potential of TikTok. And for a year, so from like December 2019 to January 2021, I was living on my savings. So I had like $30,000 in my bank account and uh, my money was just going down. The numbers were just getting closer and closer, closer to zero. And then after like a year of doing like full-time art and posting on TikTok, YouTube and everywhere, uh, that's when I like started really living from my art and making uh, making money and like really enjoying it. And it was really, uh, really nice to, it, it's, it's nice when you do something, you work really hard on it and then it pays off. So who who was buying your initial art? Like the, these were the physicals you were selling? Uh, yeah. So uh, in the beginning, I was only making money by selling my original paintings and prints of my art and also like T-shirts or hoodies, like the hoodie I'm wearing. And um, um, yeah, so the first painting I ever sold was bought by my grandmother. She she gave me a hundred dollars. <laughs> so that's two years ago, like almost day to day. My grandmother bought my first painting ever for a hundred dollars. And then the, my first buyers were my friends mainly. And then within like five months, I started getting uh, buyers. I didn't know people from the U.S., uh, people from Montreal where I live. Like how much were people giving you? They're giving you like ten grand. They're giving you five grand. What like a uh, fifty dollars? Um, <laughs> not fifty dollars, but for for the first year, I think the most expensive uh, painting I sold was two thousand US, and it took me six months before I sold my first painting for to someone who was not my friend or a family member. And before that, I was selling my paintings for like 300 or something. But it's really hard because like, even though I sell paintings for a lot of money and prints and t-shirts and merch, um, I actually make like 80% of all my income from partnerships on TikTok and YouTube, Instagram.
Well, not anymore. Now you have pop art cats and it's uh, yes. the NFT space changed that. So, you know, if we kind of get to pop art cats, right? Like the way I look at it is you got the art covered. There's no question. The art's super dope. I think it's very, um, you know, it's, it's suited for the NFT space, right? So you get to NFTs, you got pop art cats. We, you sold out immediately, right? It was an immediate sellout, like gas war type situation. So, you know, congratulations on that. Here we are. Is it Has it been a month, six weeks, two months since the drop at this point? Uh, it's been four weeks. Uh, oh, wait, actually, it's been a month. Uh, yeah, like a month and two days or something. Okay. And everyone's anticipating Roadmap 2.0. There were rumors on Twitter that there were exchanges with VaynerMedia and Gary V's people. What what beans can you spill? What can you tell us about what's going on with Pop Our Cats now? Yeah. So uh, right before we jumped in this call, I actually posted the Roadmap on the website. So if you go on the website right now, you can see the Roadmap 2.0. And uh, just to uh, talk about the Gary V thing really quickly. So uh, last week, uh, was it last week? Yeah, yeah last week yeah. on Monday, we posted a video of uh, Gary V. So it was just a video of me painting Gary V like I no normally do. So just me waving, waving my paintbrush at the canvas. And uh, within like 30 minutes, everybody tagged him on Twitter and everywhere. And he actually saw the video. So like the real Gary V saw the video. And in the video, I'm wearing a t-shirt, uh, a t-shirt with the, the words Pop Art Cats NFT in the back. And uh, he, he, he commented on Twitter. He said, wow. And then he tagged his uh, VP of core relations or something like this. And then like three hours later, I was speaking with, is VP of core relations. And now we're working on something, uh, but uh, I don't want to reveal too much because nothing is like official, but we're definitely working on something with Gary V's team right now. So it's a multi-billion dollar deal uh, <laughs> with Gary V signature in hand. Sounds great to me. Um, congratulations on that. So uh, in, in all sincerity, so it sounds like was this, it, it sounds like you were kind of, scraping by almost like i don't know like before this nft were were you like uh w w like was everything um i mean you had this huge following on social media but a following does not necessarily in itself make millions of dollars when you're when you're doing art the primary product that you're selling is the art it sounds like you were getting ad deals as well on tiktok um that was helping support things as well uh do, do you think like had that replaced your salary at that point or did this NFT project, w w was this the main catalyst that actually, um, you know, enabled you to go full in um, art? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, before building this NFT collection, I did like lots of collabs with big brands uh, like the Chicago Bulls, Disney, Fortnite, Fortune Magazine, uh, Hulu, Puma, Samsung, and like, a bunch of other big brands. I'm forgetting the names, uh, but like I, 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 as crazy as it sounds, I like like doing uh, brand deals because it's it pays off a lot. But I don't really care about the money. I just want to create whatever that's on my mind. And I think the thing with the NFT collection now is that now I can really focus and just create whatever I want. So I actually decided to stop taking brand deals. And from now on, all my videos on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat are going to uh, aim to bring more attention towards pop art cats. So we're going to actually try to uh, get like the biggest NFT influencers attention. So uh, I'm working on a painting. You got them right career. here. <laughs> oh, Bam. yeah. Bam, done. No, I'm just kidding. Go. <laughs> so uh, I'm working on a painting of Stephen Curry. We're going to post it on Friday. And again, everybody uh, will be asked to tag Stephen Curry. We're going to try to get his attention like we did for Gary Vee. And uh, like every week from now on, I'm going to paint a big NFT influencer. 
and uh, I'm gonna be wearing my Pop Art Cats NFT T-shirt every time. And like my videos get 600 million views every year. So if like 600 million views, uh, if 600 million people see the Pop Art Cats NFT T-shirt, I mean that's I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna bring more attention and eyes towards the project. And um, yeah, I'm really happy that now uh, that we made like lots of money with NFTs, I can really focus on just do creating whatever I want to create. Very cool, man. So I got uh, Roadmap 2.0 pulled up. There's a lot going on here. So I'd love to know. It looks like you're talking about a podcast. It looks like merch for holders, free merch. Uh, and that's really cool prints as well. Um, we're, we got a token here, it looks like, Popcoin. Can you kind of walk us through some of the stuff on this roadmap? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, before we move on with the roadmap, uh, or as we move on, so I just want to say that like our goal with Pop Art Cats is to actually help as many artists as possible to live, fr live from their art so people don't have to go through what I had to go through, so people don't have to like move away from their family and friends for a year and live on their savings for a year and just grind like crazy. So we want to make sure like nobody has to do what I did. So um, we're going to try actually to uh, promote other artists who are doing well or artists who are bringing uh, good into the world. So for example, if you're an artist and you're trying to uh, way, raise awareness uh, around the mental health issues or the environment or education or women rights. We're going to reward these people. And uh, the first way we're going to do it is through our podcast. So the podcast is going to be called The Chesco Show. And uh, uh, it might be like every week we're going to bring an artist on the show and we're going to talk about his art, his background, his life, his daily routine, and uh, like basically just have a nice call, a nice call, a nice chat with like emerging artists. And uh, so, like, that's the first step. So, we're going to try to uh, create this podcast and start it uh, in March. And then we're, we're building a new website. So, on the website, you will be able to connect your wallet address. And uh, there you will see, like, uh, I don't want to say too much about this, but uh, let's just move on to the next bullet point. Uh, so if you've been holding your NFT since February 7th, uh, you will actually get free merch. So there's more details on the website, but you have to hold it at least for three months. Um, and then if we move on to the online store, so on the website, you will be able to buy uh, merch of your own NFT. So uh, we got a guy on our team who built a successful clothing line. And he's a really, really creative and uh, creative guy. And he's really good at business development. And uh, he's actually working with us to build an online store, a clothing line. And... Um, what, That's for what yeah. would you say is like the number one thing that you're just like pumped up about this roadmap of all, all the different items? Um, I think the Chesco's, so the awards. So every year, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna organize like a ceremony, and we're gonna reward artists that did good for the world during the year. So uh, it can be digital artists or just artists in general. And we're going to organize a ceremony in real life and also in the metaverse. And then you can just show up and uh, it will be like the Oscars or the Golden Globes or something like this. Is the award going to be your face? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I don't think people would want to have my face on their, uh, in, the, in their bedrooms in the, on their shelf. So it might be something related to pop art cats or... Uh, something like this but uh yeah so and and uh, the people who will win the the awards will be uh invited to our uh, international touring exhibition so 
every year we're going to do uh, like a, a international exhibition and we're going to showcase art from the people that we like, the artists that we like and the artists that won an award. And we're going to go around the world and just uh, try to uh, elevate and promote artists that we that we like and that we think are doing good for this planet. I see you got Guinness World Records on there. What, what's the deal with that? Um, so um, we're working on uh, getting a Guinness World Record. Uh, so it's going to be like a marketing stunt. And uh, like personally, I always dreamed of getting a Guinness World Record. When I was young, I was fascinated by the Guinness World Records. I was spending hours just looking at the, the books and just reading everything. And, uh, and now it's cool because, like I said, I can like, just focus on creating whatever I want. So we're going to do uh, a Guinness World Record. And uh, like, these things take a while to uh, like, plan and, and create. So uh, I don't want to commit to and see like, what, what it's going to be. But uh, I'm really excited about this one. Very cool, man. And what about the token? Is there anything that you can share about the token? Uh, yes. So um, every day that you will be holding your pop art cat or your uh, leopard. So uh, j just a little, uh, uh, I just want to touch, uh, talk about the pop art leopards really quickly. So if the floor price goes up and it becomes really expensive, and it's too expensive for newcomers to join the community. We're going to release uh, another collection, another NFT collection. It's going to be called the Pop Art Leopards. And uh, this way, we can bring more people in the community and we uh, can become bigger and have more reach. But uh, until then, it's just going to be the Pop Art Cats. And if you own a Pop Art Cat, every day you're going to accumulate tokens and you will be able to use these tokens to buy merch so uh, t-shirts of your nfts hoodies uh, canvas prints of your nfts and uh, in the long term you will also be able to buy my my own stuff so my paintings or like my, my prints uh, from my personal brand from matchesco and uh and uh, also, you will be able to buy the pop art items, um, which will be like another NFT collection that we will drop. And uh, I mean, it's not an NFT collection, but it's like items that you can buy with the tokens. Uh, but I don't want to reveal too much about this because uh, uh, it, it's, it's not happening anytime soon. Okay, well, we got the, the Generation 2 rollout. Sounds like something, uh, you know, Roadmap 2.0. Something is in the works with Gary V. Billion dollar uh, partnership deal signed. Billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any timeline for, for the Gary V thing? Um, uh, yeah, this summer, I would say. Yeah. Okay, well, that's going to come sooner rather than later. Well, everyone, check out Pop Art Cats. Um, you know, check out Matt on social media. Uh, he's got a ton of followers across different platforms. Matt, oh, go ahead, Nick. I was going to say, I don't know if you were rapping there. I had a couple more questions real quick. Yeah, no, go, go ahead. I was going to ask Matt if he had anything else, but go ahead. Um, in terms of, uh, well, you said, I mean, the real goal is to turn this into a platform for um, other artists. I'm I'm wondering, you know, when you uh, launch with this, it, like, it, it's it's difficult. T typically, like artists focus on art centric projects. You have uh, businesses that build uh, go go down the business path, and I think uh, more towards the platform. It sounds like what you're describing is essentially a platform. I'm wondering though, from that standpoint, like. Well, A, how do you think about this uh, in terms of this shift to running a business? Are you building a team? Like, how do you go about doing that? And like, did you have a team before? Is it like, or was it mostly like you had a manager or someone like that who's like dealing with some of the deals that you're doing? And, and how, how has this uh, NFT project changed all that? Um, yeah, so um, 
I like to manage my art career like a business. So when I was at university, I was managing a 30 people team uh, with uh, a friend and we were building a solar car together for like solar car competitions. It was not for commercial commercial use, it was just for like competitions. And uh, like right now we're building a team and uh, like, I don't want to be the guy managing the whole thing. I'm more like the vision behind the project and the artist. So I create a lot of, lots of visual stuff. Uh, so when we launched, we were, uh, before we, uh, did the minting, we were actually only three people on the team, uh, in the full time. And, uh, now we're, uh, six ish, uh, almost seven people on the team. And uh, like we found three really sharp people to help with the marketing, business development, and just m managing the whole thing in uh, like two weeks. And we're pretty excited. We just started working with the new theme, and uh, uh, yeah, things are gonna get pretty, uh, pretty wild, man. <laughs> awesome. Well, what, sorry, Pio. Did, what? Was well, I mean, he you told saying? you, he told you what you were looking to hear, man. Things are going to get wild. Is that a, a satisfactory response, Nick? I mean, when I think about our business, I think the same thing. I'm like, look, uh, just walling out, you know, that's all that we do. We, it's that like professional walling out, very structured, uh, in that way. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm wondering more about what the, uh, what challenges it is for that, but it sounds like you've been a manager since the beginning. Congratulations on having that skill set. Uh, I certainly don't, um, as uh, anyone that works with me will tell you, uh, that's very blatantly uh, apparent uh, the moment you start interacting with me. Um, so, uh, you know, managing people is definitely something which is an acquired skill over time, and it sounds like you have that. So, congratulations. I mean, uh, you, you took this call from uh, what's clearly an office. So I was impressed when we started chatting to begin with. Um, Pio, his office is his bedroom, uh, whereas, <laughs> and, and my office is a hallway with currently toilet paper sitting there, but it's blurred, so no one really necessarily knew that was the case. But now you know that that's. What I can that guess was. the brand, yeah. Okay, so uh, in terms of, uh, so I'm impressed um, from a business standpoint. In all seriousness, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. Was there anything you wanted to add, uh, Pio? No, I mean, hey, I'm a fan. I'm a holder of the project. I bought it on our group wallet. I'm excited to see what's coming, man. And um, hey, fellow content creator, really appreciate you collaborating with us today. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I just want to say a final thing. So, sure. um, so thanks for everybody who's already uh, joined the project and the community. So we're just getting started and uh, like, Things are going to get wild, like I said, and I'm a really competitive guy. So if right now we're not doing things right, we're going to uh, reorganize and do things right to get to the top. And uh, when I do something, I want to be number one. I don't want to be number two. And I think right now we have a really, really sharp and really uh, smart team behind the project. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the future of this project. Thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. Well, everyone, make sure that you hit the like button for this video. Subscribe to the channel. We'll really appreciate it. And uh, Matt, thank you so much, man. Best of luck with Pop Our Cats.